I wonder how many of you are old enough to remember what you were doing at the time that Princess Diana died in a car accident in Paris. Well, I can remember exactly what I was doing. We'd been away in a caravan and, and we were packing it all up. And that was when the radio was turned on and I heard the shocking news. And you probably remember that her death opened up an absolute wave of grief all over the UK in particular. And I mention this because at the moment in this passage that we're reading about in the Gospel of Mark, there's been this tsunami of grief all over Israel and particularly in the land of Judah. And it's been started by John the Baptist, who has been uh, preaching this fiery message of repentance and coming back to God. He's been telling people that the kingdom of God is near. Uh, for them, that would have spoken about a Messiah coming very shortly. Uh, and that they are to get their hearts right before God in preparation for this Messiah. And so this is the background to this passage. And he starts off his ministry in an incredibly humble and obedient position. Now, I've imagined what it might be like to be there and to witness what was happening that day when Jesus went to John to be baptised. And I wrote a little dramatic reading and it goes like this. Lots of people flocked to hear this fiery prophet's message and when they did they were cut to the heart. Turn around he kept saying look at yourself and take stock. Saying you're sorry isn't enough. Actions speak louder than words. Whatever it is that you're hell-bent on doing, turn around and change your mind. And they did. They wept. They confessed their wrongdoing. They made restitution to their families, to those they had hurt. And then they went under the water, choosing in that moment that things would be very different. So imagine for a moment that you're sitting there in the hot sun on the edge of the desert with a light wind coming off the water. John's voice carries clearly over the river. He doesn't mince his words. There are a bunch of religious leaders down near the front arguing with him. You can tell who they are by their robes. And now it seems that John has offended them because they've stormed off. He calls them a nest of poisonous snakes and there's a guffaw of laughter from a bunch of Roman soldiers at the back. But they soon pipe down when the prophet dishes out a message for them too. Now a woman surrounded by hordes of small children shouts from the crowd are you the one who is to come or should we look for another the baptizer is shaking his dark dreadlocks from side to side i'm not the messiah no and i look to see where he's nodding at a quiet man and is now pulling off his shirt I baptise you with water, says John, but the one who is more powerful than I is coming. I'm not even worthy to untie his sandals. Apparently, the man has removed his own sandals. He's currently wading knee-deep into the water. 
the crowd leans forward to watch. The man and the prophet exchange words. Surely this potential Messiah hasn't come for baptism. Shouldn't it be the other way round? Him doing the baptising? But it seems that he does want to be baptised, kneeling down on the gravel bed of the Jordan, disappearing under the current. When he comes up again, there's a sudden breeze, carried on the breeze, a sound like thunder. At that precise moment, the clouds part, rays of bright sunshine illuminate the scene from above. A white bird swoops down. Am I imagining it or does it touch him briefly? But the sun's in my eyes. It's hard to see. The white bird appears to envelop the man in its vast wings. I could swear I hear a voice. You are my dear beloved son and I'm so pleased with you. In the sunlight it's hard to see exactly where the man ends and the bird begins. They seem to merge into one another. And when I look again, the two men are hugging one another. And that great bear of a man, John the Baptizer, is sobbing on the other man's shoulder. I've never forgotten that day. All my life I'd felt angry, the injustice of things. I'd cried out to God with a raised fist, demanding that he tear down the heaven and come to help us, his people, just as it says in the ancient scriptures. I never believed that he would. But that one day it really was as if heaven was torn open like a paper bag with that beautiful great bird flowing out of it. For a little while, it felt like we were in the shadow of God's glorious wings, the wings of an almighty saviour come down to help us. That's right, not to point out our wrongdoing all the time, not to rub our noses in the dirt. No, not that at all. So the next day I joined the queue to be baptised. I too went down under the waters like the rest of them. I've turned around, I've repented, I've changed my mind, whatever it is you like to call it. And when I came up out of that Jordan River, there were no peals of thunder. I'm not the dramatic type, you know, but there was this sense of just the gentlest brush of a feathered wing that might have touched my cheek and a whisper that only I could hear in my heart. You are my beloved, my beloved child and I am so pleased with you. Dear Lord, we thank you that you are a God of new starts. We thank you for your cleansing and renewal. And it's all because of Jesus. And as we turn around in these moments, as we change our mind and turn away from those things that we know are wrong, we come to you, we ask you to pour your spirit upon us and to speak those wonderful words to our own hearts that we may know too that we are beloved and precious to you, our God, and that our lives too may be pleasing to you. Thank you, dear God, that through baptism we bury our old lives and turn away from them completely leaving them there symbolically in the water and that as we rise out of that watery grave we are risen with christ 
we are a new creation. Thank you that life has begun in a completely new way. So help us to remember, Lord, what our baptism truly means and to use it as a marker. Henceforth, I have been buried with Christ. My old nature is crucified. It is no longer alive. My new nature is risen and from now I live for Christ and through Christ and in Christ. Amen.